Good morning, students. In today's class, we have some student presentations. Mariam will be presenting the. Dear camera, so. Mariam will be presenting the uh, relation between uh, position, nature, and size of the image formed by a convex lens, and then Rifat will be presenting the position, nature, and size of the image formed by the concave lens, and later. Aisha will give us some idea about the power of lens. So I would like Mariam to start her presentation. Mariam, you can start your presentation. Aisha, can you see the screen? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today I'll explain about the convex lens and the position, nature, and the size of the formed image. So first, we all have to know about something that is the um, concave lens are always converging lens. So uh, the, the rays that are going to pass through this lens will always get converging. The rays will always converge. So uh, there is this we can see there is point uh, there will be a principal axis and point uh, and there will be different points we'll see uh, the point in the center that is O which is uh, optical center and F and F F1 and F2 which is principal principal focus and uh, uh, so I just don't know that, uh, okay. So there will be three rules, okay? So first, uh, three rules for um, the light that are going to pass from a position. First, rule one, uh, array of light, which is parallel to a principal axis, uh, after refraction, pass, it will pass through the focus on the other side of the lens. So it's F2, it will pass, it will be parallel and it will pass through F2, okay? And there will be other, another second rule, there will be the ray of light passing through the uh, optical center of the lens, optical center of the lens. And it will, um, of the lens and it will go straight and it will emerge without any deviation. And the rule three will be uh, a ray passing through the focus for, for the, uh, from the focus after refraction it become parallel to the uh, principal axis so we need to keep this mind and now i'll start our rules so first uh, if the object is at infinite distance so you can see there is two images which one is parallel to one axis. This one is parallel to the principal axis, and this is not parallel to the principal axis. So uh, here the object is at infinity. Uh, the incident rays are parallel to, always parallel to each other. So in first, in this case, the image, the, if, uh, the rays are parallel to principal axis, the image is formed at the principal axis, uh, sorry, in the in, uh, at the principal focus. Always it will form the, the, at the principal focus. And the second one, no, sorry, I'm just, okay. Yeah, yeah, if they're, uh, sorry, if they're not parallel, they will, they will not form at the principal focus. They will be uh, like below, either it's below or a little bit either above, okay? But when it's parallel, when it's parallel, it will exactly form at the principal focus. Okay, so uh, here the properties of these images, you can see the uh, it is highly diminished and the picture is real and inverted and the image is formed at the principal focus and the properties of the image is highly diminished and real and inverted, i say that again, okay. So the next one is, um, the uh, object at more than 2f distance. So here you can see uh, the uh, real AB is an object one. So we have to take always two 
we need to take two. We always need to choose two out of the three rules to form an image. So first one is the, it is parallel to the principal axis. And one more is it is going through the optical center. So when the object is, um, when the object is more than 12 distance, so the object will, uh, the image will form at the, at between, in between the principal focus and um, it will form between this F, 2F and F. So the image is here. Okay, you can see the image, it's here. Okay, and the image, position of the image is between F and 2F. Nature of the image is real and inverted and the size is diminished. So number three, the object is at 2F distance. If the object is at 2F distance, then um, the rule one and rule two that are, we are going to use it again and the object, the image will exactly form at 2F and the image will be inverted and real and equal to the size of the object. Okay, so number four, we have the object is between F and 2F. The object is going to be between 2F and F1. So we'll have to take again two rays one is going through the principal axis, which one is parallel to the principal axis, and one is uh, one is going through the optical center, and the image will be formed beyond 2F. So here is the image. The image will form here, and the image will be, the nature of the image will be real and inverted, and size will be magnified. Now, number five. Uh, when the object is at principal focus, F1, so the object, the, uh, the image will, we will get, the image will be at infinity because uh, it is getting closer to the lens. So the image will be real and inverted and, or sometimes it will be erect and virtual. And the, the object, the size of the object, the image will be extremely uh, magnified. Okay, number six. Uh, the object between optical center and the principal focus. So now the here the, the reflect rays are this divergent. We need to extend the uh, they will never meet here. So they are going far away. There is no chance to meet. So they we have to extend them backward. After extending them backward, we can see here the image will be formed. Uh, backwards of the lens so um, so here we can see the image it's a b and the uh, image will be formed the image that form is uh, is at uh, uh, is at the same side of the object and the nature of the object, the nature of the image is virtual and erect and size is magnified that's, that's all thank you teacher i'm finished once more. Once more, she has to explain. I think that was very clear. The presentations were really clear. Mariam, thank you for the presentation. It was really clear. Is there any doubt for uh, to any of the students? No. Okay, Irfan, why did you tell once more? No, it was very clear. It was very pleasant. So that's why. Okay. okay. So yeah. the next person to make the presentation is uh, Rifat. So Rifat, are you ready? Teacher, teacher, she cannot share the yes, uh, screen, so I'll share for her. Is that okay? Okay, okay, okay. You can share the screen and she will explain, right? Yes, teacher. So continue. Mariam, you can share the screen. See the screen? 
Yes, yes, we can see. So teacher, I will be explaining concave length. So at first, concave length is a diverging lens. Since they are diverging rays, we need to produce them backwards. So from here, if we take figure one, so we will be taking this principal axis. From here, 2F2, F2, O and F1 and 2F1. The middle point O is optical center. All these points are at the same distance from each other. So for concave lens, F1 and F2 are on opposite side compared to a concave convex lens. So for rule of image formation for concave lens, rule one, a ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis after refraction appears to be coming from the focus. Rule two, a ray of light going towards the optical center of a concave lens goes straight through, uh, through without being deviated. Rule three, a ray of light going towards the focus after refraction becomes parallel to the principal axis. So to draw the ray diagram, can you swipe, Mariam? For drawing the ray diagram, we need two out of the three rules. So let's use one, uh, rule one and rule two. For the first ray, we need a ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis after reaction appears to be coming from the focus. And for the second ray, we need a ray of light going towards the optical center of a concave lens to go straight through without being deviated. So where they meet, since they are divergent ray, we need to produce them backward and the point they meet is the image. So the image will be real and upright, inverted. So case two, object. This is for the object beyond 2F2. Yeah, and the object will be formed at this image. So at case two, we need uh, here also we need two out of three rules. So we can use here rule one and rule two. For the first ray, we need a ray of light which is parallel to the principal axis after refraction appears to be coming from the focus. And the second ray, the ray of light going towards the optical center of a concave lens goes straight through without being deviated. So here also the image will be real and upright inverted. So the properties of image are the image is virtual and erect. The image is diminished and formed between object and lens. So no matter where the object is placed, the image property will always be the same. Teacher finish. Thank you, Rifat. I think that was also a very clear presentation and she explained well. So is there any doubt regarding the formation of image by a convex lens and a concave lens? To any, any of you? No, teacher. Okay, so let us continue the presentation. So now Aisha will be presenting the power of lens. Aisha have shared her uh, presentation with me before. So I'll be sharing that. Aisha, are you ready? Yes, teacher. So you have taken the same template as I used to do for this chapter, right? Yes, teacher. I like this one. That's why I so you can start your presentation. 
Assalamu alaikum. Today I'm going to discuss about power of feeling. So here is the definition of power of feeling. The ability of the lens to converge a beam of parallel rays of light or diverge a beam of parallel rays of light is called power of lens. We know in con convex lens, con we know a convex lens converges the light rays towards the principal axis, whereas a concave lens diverges the light rays away from the principal axis. So the greater the power of the lens, the greater is, is its ability to reflect light that passes through it. So for a convex lens, the converging ability is defined by power and in a concave lens, the diverging ability. So the power of the lens is also defined as the inverse of its focal length in meters. So here is a few rays diagram and the explanation. Uh, here we can see that as the focal length decreases, the amount of light band increases. Therefore, we can conclude that the power of the lens is inversely proportional to the focal length of the lens. So if the lens have less Excuse focal length, then its power me. will be higher. Excuse me, Rifa. Uh, Aisha, you have mentioned here yes. power is directly proportional, but you mentioned correct. Power is inversely oh, teacher, proportional. I forgot. Ah, it's okay. It's I okay. forgot to. You told oh, so the if... right thing, but uh, in print there was a slide. Yeah, I forgot to write that. Yeah, others can note that. Uh, so if a lens has less focal length, then its power will be higher. Whereas if a lens have more focal length, its power will be less. Uh, since the uh, power of a lens is inversely proportional to focal length, so we can write P is proportional to 1 by F, where F is focal length of the lens and P is power. So in order to remove the proportional sign, we have to replace it with the constant. So instead of that, we can write k, where k is a constant of proportion, proportionality. Uh, so our final equation is p equal to 1 by f. Uh, for converging lens, the optical power is positive, and for diverging lens, it is negative. A uh, unit of a power is diopter. We can also write as per meter uh, and the definition of diopter is the power of lens of focal length one meter is called one diopter. Uh, here is the significance. Um, the power of the lens plus two d means the lens is convex and it can converge a beam of light at a distance of half meter from the lens. Um, the power of the lens is minus 4 dimens. It is concave and it can diverge a beam of parallel rays of light at a distance of 1 by 4 from the lens. Now combination of lenses and equivalent lens. The definition of combination of lenses is if two or more lenses are in contact with each other along the same axis, then it is called combination of lenses. Definition of equivalent of lens, the image formed by a combi combination of lenses. If the same image is formed by a single lens placed at a position of the combination, then the single lens is called an equivalent lens. Here it is saying that combination of lens acts like a single lens and it has fixed focal length. So for n number of lenses in a combination of lens, the focal length F are respectively F1, F2, F3, 
up to fn and focal length of equivalent lens is f and our final equation is 1 by equivalent lens equal to 1 by f1 plus 1 by f2 1 plus 1 by f3 up to fn using this we can we can use this to solve numerical problems Uh, again, for n number of lenses in a combination of lens, the power PR respectively P1, P2, P3 up to Pn and power of equivalent lens is P and our equation is power of equivalent of lens equal to a P1 